Hello, everybody. Welcome back to episode 11 of the Mad Hatters with me, Ringo87811 Gaming. Um, just first of all, I'd like to apologize for the quality of the last video. Um, I didn't actually notice it and it didn't show up when I was like, encoding the video. Um, it only sort of showing up when it uploaded to YouTube. So I don't know whether there was a a rendering issue or anything like that um but anyway that that is what it is i'm not going to take it down because we still despite it not being very watchable um there was still some comments in there that i made which hold true to the, the save in the series so we'll leave that on there uh and we did say in the last video we may be eating our words ever so slightly uh, and we kind of have um we were third in the league when that video was recorded. We are now down to 10th. And um, that might look like a a bad season. But if you have a look at the likes of Tottenham, Everton, West Ham United, Leicester City, even Newcastle to an extent, all having quite bad seasons. And um, we are six points. Uh, sorry, five points off of Southampton, who are in the um, Conference League places. So to me, we're not having a bad season at all. Um, I'm just going to click on the schedule and just show you. We've had some really mad results and there's some interesting things that have happened tactics-wise. Um, when we last left off, it was here. It was when we got on that really, really good run and then we just got absolutely pummeled. Uh, I did mention, for those who did stick around and watch it, I didn't think we'd beat City and it was right and it sort of just went downhill from there. You can see that the goal scorers sort of sort of dried up a bit um you see um gamvula wasn't really scoring and it was just a bit of uh, it was just just getting a bit getting me down a little bit um so when it comes to the chelsea game we changed the tactic up slightly um i watched a lot of videos and read a lot of stuff uh and we actually discussed it in matty's stream about um how your mentality just affects everything um and my idea was i want my players my team to be defensively solid and we've got so much raw pace we've got so much power that if we can get the ball forward and to the wings quickly we will be able to counter attack teams uh, and that is exactly what we did against chelsea and um, you see the team pretty much stayed the same um the, the formation's still the same it was Bayich, Bree, Lionheart, Lockyer, Zagra, Richards, Koulibaly, Ojo, Honeyman and Ketia. Yeah, it's, you know, the same players. And um, one lad who actually came in on deadline day, uh, Daniel James from Manchester United, he signed for, I want to say 13 million. I'm just going to have a little look now. Um, 13 million. He's only scored the one goal and got the one assist. But again, it, it he's having to adapt to the way we play. And he's gone from playing for Manchester United, who are very free flow and are very expansive. And I've got all these lovely players who can slip him in to playing for Luton. We've just got to graft a bit more. Um, but he's actually done very well. This was one of his first games, I think maybe his second or third, uh, and it, he got the goal which won us the game. Um, it was a it was a tight affair, I want to say. Um, we've basically changed the mentality to defensive, and we've done that because we want to have people behind the ball and sort of set the trap so we can break. Um, you can see here, Chelsea, as you would expect, has a lot of the ball, 53%, so it's not actually that much more. Uh, they had a few shots, a few more shots on target. You can see Lukaku was sort of average, Werner, average, uh, and so on and so forth. Uh, and yeah, we, we managed to get the result out of them. And the goal which won it sort of encapsulated exactly what I want from this team and how we're going to play going forward. And it gave me a lot of confidence to say, do you know what, if, if we can do it against Chelsea, got such a good team i mean a few random players fernandez in goal zuma was playing um you see they had jesus corona taliso Adrid Zola, a few players like that on the bench but they've still got really good quality in the likes of like lukaku Havertz Werner, mount uh frankie de jong's there conte's there and tom lockyer uh, and philip Linehart just kept on quiet lukaku actually missed the penalty as well and i'm hoping the highlights show that and um, by it game of his life and he's had a few of them this season he's actually come on leaps and bounds and again it it it, it pays credence to the fact that i mentioned in the video when we first signed him he is like he's too good for this team but the fact that we were able to attract him and identify him so early on 
sort of give me a, a, a good stead for the save. Um, and, and we went for it from there. And he's now our number one goalkeeper. He was classed as a wonder kid for a little bit, but he's sort of gone off the boil. He's made a few mistakes recently. Um, but again, he, he's like a, a French under 21 international. He's, he's a young goalkeeper. He's going to make mistakes as all young players do. Well, any player, all players make mistakes. Um, but yeah, so he, he's been performing extremely well. Uh, Tom Lockie has adapted quite well to the, to the Premier League. Uh, a few players haven't, George Honeyman being one of them. And we'll talk about that a little bit later on. Um, but we're just going to see the highlights from this. And I'll try and talk through, again, what the idea is. So you can see this is Reese James' goal. They're playing quite narrow. We were defending narrow, which allowed people to get in the box a bit more. So we changed our defensive um, setting to go wide. And straight away, Gamvula scores a lovely header. So we're playing a bit wider. You can see Alan Campbell playing as the ball winner, got himself in like the half space. And then this was the winner. Plays a lovely one too with Gamvula, gets himself into the area and just smashes it. Bottom corner in front of the Luton fans. And and that is sort of what we want. We want quick balls forward to the likes of Gamvula, Shea Ojo, Dan James, players like that. Um, all sorts of the fast players that we've got. Don't forget Gamvula, despite being pretty much a target man is very, very, very fast. Um, and we, we played that way from there on. We did exactly the same against Manchester United, against Southampton. Um, Eddie and Ketty's goal was very similar. It, it was a quick counter-attack, and he got on the end of it. Uh, Gamvula, again, strength to strength. Every time we're playing, he missed the penalty too. So he could have had a hat-trick in that game. The goals were scoring, and the people who are scoring, you can see Gamvula is carrying us even in like the latter stages of the season. And um, the only like really disappointing result has been this one against Wolves. They just turned up to the den and just absolutely slapped us everywhere. Um, and again, then we had to rescue a draw in the derby against Watford, but we followed that up with a, go- a couple of good wins a 3 0 win against Be- a 3 1 win against Burnley, and a 3 0 win against Brighton. Um, Bakary Jatta, when we spoke about it in the last video, we basically had a word with him and said, look, mate, you're not performing to the standard we expect. And he's sort of, he's picked up from there. He's only actually made four starts, but he's got five goals in um, what, 18 appearances, 17 appearances overall. Um, he's solid. He, he's just, he, he does his job. He, he's quick. He, he, he's quick and he can run with the ball. And that's basically all we bring him on to do. Um, a cheap outlay for a player that can play in multiple positions too. He's a good tackler as well. So as a press and forward, he's actually very, very, very good. Um, and he's benefited this tactic quite well. So I'm just going to show you the tactic now. Uh, as I say, we've changed the mentality to defensive. Uh, and we're just going to speak about why. So um, this is what we play. Gamvula now plays as a poacher, despite him being like an absolute unit. Um, because of his, we've got him on tackle harder. Um, he doesn't press as much, but I'm going to show you on the out of possession tab something interesting. I I just sort of stumbled upon a, uh, in terms of pressing, and it's not something I've really like noticed before, and I've not really seen anyone else talk about it, even like Z or um, like Foxy or anyone like that. Um, so I said to the, some of the lads in the Discord, I mentioned it in today's video, but he plays as a poacher, uh, and a poacher's main role is to... He sits on the shoulder of the last defender, looking to break the defensive line and run onto three balls, although they're always ready to run out his marker to happen to cross the ball required. His main aim is to try to put the ball in the back of the net, and that that's what we want. He, we want him to put the ball in the back of the net. You can see from his attributes, he's got 17 pace, he's got 16 strength, 13 acceleration. His off the ball isn't the best, but then when you look at his uh, individual attributes and traits, um, he runs the ball through the centre, he likes to beat the offside trap, and he shoots with power. So he basically he breaks forward, he runs as fast as he can, he runs through people because of how strong and athletic he is. And when he gets into the chance into the, the goal scoring positions, he just leathers it. Uh, and it it's it suited us quite well. Um on the wings, we we swap depending on who's playing where. Um, you know, again, in Ketty and Ojo play on opposite sides. They play as inverted wingers if they're playing on the right. And I feel like we need a bit more width. They come in as wingers. Uh, Eddie and Ketty 
has really, really struggled this season. And um, compared to the last, you can see he's only on a six point uh, six seven average rating. Um, he's not scored many. I think he might have scored five or six, uh, five goals. He's not really adapted all that well. He's not going to get the start and striker role because Gamvula is basically like the embodiment of what we want for this tactic. So he's been playing as an inverted winger or an inside forward for so long this season, and it's just not had the same effect. And I think that's because the way we play is detriment to them. So we've changed them up and we started playing them as an attack and winger. Um, and when we play as an attack, I play him as an attack and winger. We actually play narrow. Um, and again, it's it, it's a video that Zealand made a little while back about how to get your wingers scoring more goals and you know every little help. So I watched it, and he basically said, if you've got a winger on attack, a winger with an attack duty and a narrow um, attack and width, they'll basically sort of they kind of play like an inside forward, but they will get to the byline and cut it back, which is fine because we've got Gamvula in the middle. And um, but Inketi is basically like getting in between the half space, in between the fullback and the centre-back. So they're preoccupied with Gamvula and he sort of just floats in and it, it's how he scored his goal in... um scored one goal in his last couple of matches. I think it was against Brighton. Yeah, it was. It was how he scored his goal against Brighton. And, um, he, he basically got in the space in between and he just smacked it. He he, he got went, went, went one-on-one with the keeper and he just hit it and it went in. So he plays on that side, but as I say, if, if we're playing inverted wingers, we're trying to do for like the Barcelona style that Pep used to do, where you tell them to stay wide. Thierry on your used to say it all the time. He would literally be told to stand on the touchline and then cut in. So you sort of spread the play and then you all converge. And and yeah, so if we're playing wingers, we play narrow. If we're playing inverted wingers or inside forwards, we play wide. But yeah, <laughs> that's to get the fullbacks up a bit more. But yeah, that that that's sort of what changes we made there. Um, we've stopped telling Bayic to distribute to particular players. He was distributing to Honeyman, who in the championship, it, it was a, a level where if he did receive the ball to feet, he had like a good first touch of that league, like, you know, good work, great pass and whatever. Um, but in the Premier League, because the, the, the overall is better, he's not performing to the standards. We know he can, 6.78. Um, yeah, he, he's not been that great. Uh, and then out of possession, this is the interesting one. Um, so we're defending quite wide, and that's because, like I said, in the Chelsea game, um, teams were sort of overloading us in the middle, and it is, if they won the ball back, they'd counter quickly through the middle. So we're, we're trying to spread the pitch and be like, Look, you have to you have to come through us. And I feel like in defence, we're probably more stronger in defence than we are anywhere else in the pitch, with the likes of uh, Lionheart, Lockyer, Gungbo, who's still playing very, very well. Um, his physicals are definitely carrying him through. Um, so that's that idea. And then the line of engagements, if you didn't know, I've not seen it on any other videos. You literally, if you hover over where it's a standard defensive line, just gotta wait now, is it? There you go. So uh this instructs defenders how high they should position themselves when the opposition have the ball in their own half. That's a very self-explanatory. It's exactly what you'd expect. If you're playing someone like Leicester, who like getting Jamie Vardy in behind, you could go gung ho and play a really high line and, and look to to play an offside trap, or you could drop your defensive line. That's that's pretty standard. And then this was the interesting thing to find out the standard line of engagement or the lower line of engagement. Again, I just stumbled across this. It was totally accidental. A lower line of engagement instructs players to wait until the opposition come towards them before engaging them in a pressing game. That is pretty much what you'd expect. Think of Everton under Ancelotti. We'd sort of sit back a little bit, especially against the bigger teams. Um, the first player, in this case, Gambula, is unlikely to trigger the press, but will instead look to block passing lanes. So Gamvula sort of just drifts around. If he can make an interception, that's fine. We're telling him to tackle harder, so if anyone does get too close to him, he can not trigger the press necessarily. If they come to him, he'll hit them. Um, other players will follow suit while retaining much of their tactical positioning as they bid to condense the available space to play in. Um, that was really interesting to me. It, it makes sense when you just read the lower, but when the game's now actually got descriptions of it, you can visualise it a bit more. 
So basically what happens is we're telling them that they've got to go infield. We're trying to force the opposition to play infield. So in the the instance of the Chelsea game, they had Reese James on one side, Chilwell on the other. You saw, you saw Reese James score the goal and they were literally just exploiting down the flank every time. So we changed it. We went lower and we said to Gamvula, we said, you you just play poacher, mate. You, you make their defenders worry about you. Dan James and, and uh, Shea Ojo, as we were playing, they're the ones who would sort of keep an eye on the wing backs, force them in field. And then that's when we've got the two centre mids. At the time, it was Pelly Ruddock and Koulibaly, who are both strong, physical, aggressive lads. They will get in your face. They will try and tackle you. And that's the whole point. If they get behind them, you've got Honeyman uh, or Campbell, who we play there just as a defensive midfielder. He will try and win the ball back. If you get past them, you've got the defenders to worry about. And that's when we break. But by that time, the two wingers are tracking the wing backs and Gamvul is still up there. So he'll either get in behind the high defensive line or he'll hold the ball up and allow the likes of Inketia, Shea Ojo, um, Bakary Jata, etc. To, to get in and amongst it with him uh, and basically trigger a goal. And it's happened a few times. Um, I'll just show you again, if you go to a much lower line of engagement, so this line of engagement is where the forwards in the team begin to press the opposition to try to win the ball back. That is the most interesting thing I have read on this game in a long, long, long time. It, it, the forwards in the team on a much lower, you would expect much higher to be the line of engagement is where the forwards in the team begin to press the opposition to try and win the ball back in combination with the defensive line. It allows control over the team's vertical compactness. So it's similar. It's very similar. It, it's the exact same description. So you can get your players to play a very high pressing game with a l not necessarily a low block or a high block. It's not even a mid block. You're basically just compacting that entire middle. So, again, I've got Liverpool. Um, we're going to live on the Liverpool game. As you see in the thumbnail, they have got Erling Haaland. So, <laughs> we know Liverpool like to play with wing-backs. They've got Trent Alexander-Arnold and Andrew Robertson. They've now got some unbelievable players up front, including Erling Haaland. We basically need to constrict the middle of the pitch as much as we can and not let them play through the channels like they like to do. Um, I'm going to go with this much lower line of engagement. So it's going to force my forward players to, uh, to instigate the press. So for that reasoning is now Gamvula is going to play as the pressing forwards because we want them to press. We want them to get in amongst the center backs. They'll have Virgil, Virgil van Dijk, who is so physical. We want them to engage in that battle. We want them to get in their faces. We want them to be nasty. We want them to be horrible. And the defensive mentality doesn't mean that we're going to, sit back in and not do anything you can read the description there it's best employees for matches where you're favored to lose and where you expect the opponents put you into ext under extended pressure that is literally what's happened all season long because we're not good enough to be in this division we've made some good additions we basically the, the whole board objective was to try and avoid relegation we have avoided relegation unless we have a catastrophe we've nearly reached the 40 point mark so yeah it, it aims to keep men behind the ball that's what we're doing to restrict the space in your own half. That's what we're doing. Slow things down and frustrate the opposition and relies on direct balls to the forwards followed by sharp, quick passing to score goals on the counter. That is literally exactly what we want the team to do. That is exactly how we want to play. Um, we keep the, the tempo on standard for now. That's sort of because we want to break a bit quicker. For this particular game, we will go lower and just do what the, what it says. So we're still passing it into space and we're still running at the defence. That basically means that the, the three forward lads are just going to bomb forward when they get the ball back. But the whole point is that the, the three forward lads are the ones who are going to try to win the ball back. And that is the most interesting thing about much lower line of engagement. And it's not something I've seen talked about anywhere, basically. Again, for this particular game, we want to win the ball back off Liverpool as quickly as possible. The way to combat Liverpool, similar in real life, as you see in Aston Villa do and, and other teams do, why have I just slowed down like Jamie Carragher? And if you take a look there, so they will use Trent and Andrew Robertson to bomb forward and, and get forward as much as possible. We want our forward lads to restrict that. 
I fancy Dan Vula against Van Dyke and Joe Gomez. Oh my goodness, look at that. Look at them physicals. But he's got enough about him to to disrupt disrupt them because you know how they're gonna play. Um it, it's Jürgen Klopp, but it's it's very self-explanatory. They will play a particular way. Locatelli is gonna be a Metzala, Yuri Tielemans is gonna be a playmaker, Fabinho is gonna be a whole midfielder, Robertson and Alexander Arnold are gonna overlap, Mane Salah and Haaland are all gonna run forward and try and and, and try and basically break us down and, and, and play through the channels. So we want that we want to trigger that. We want them to get in and amongst it and then we want to counter work with width, which is why we are going to play inside forwards and we're going to play wide. So inside forwards, inside forwards, and we're going to play in attack. We want to play wide because if we do, when we do, however it happens, because yeah, very wide, we want them to stretch the play even wider and use the full extremes of the pitch. We want Ojo and Anketia to be out wide because Trent uh, and Robertson are out of position and then we want to trigger it and we want to counter. So hopefully it works. We'll have to see. I've got a good feeling because we've had some decent results uh, in particular against Chelsea, Manchester United, Manchester City. We've had a few really, really good results. Um, So yeah, that is my thoughts on the Liverpool game. Just to show you as well really quickly, um, there's a few transfers. We've got Lyndon Dykes, who's on the transfer list. Um, there's a few other people. Pervade is going to be going to be leaving at the end of his loan. Um, there's, there's a few ins as well. Um, I'm going to show you them very quickly. We did speak about this guy, Dave Franco, in the previous video. Um, he's essentially Yerry Mina regen. Uh, he's very tall. He's quite quick. He's got really good jumping reach, really good heading, good determination, great bravery and tackling. He's just going to get in and amongst it. He's either footed and he can pass the ball. Um, one million pounds got himself a nice work permit he joins at the end of the current season uh, and Laurinio who Gremio have absolutely done the dirty on us and just stopped playing him since we signed him but again he was only 54k so let him develop a little bit um other than that we're gonna look for the transfer history I believe Luke Berry has gone um let's see who's gone here uh, Tariq Owakwe has gone to Stoke City for £1.5 million. Um, never really developed into what we thought it'd be, but developed enough to pretty much treble our money on him. Uh, Oli Turner, one of the young lads we got from Spurs, went to Stoke as well. Ryan Williams, a, a regen who come through in the first youth intake, never going to make it. Um, he went to Rochdale and Luke Berry went out to Preston North End. Uh, and yeah, that is pretty much the status it's been. Tenth in the league is more than acceptable for me. Um, if we just look again at the metrics, because we all love looking at metrics. Um, although we have got uh, Philip Lionheart, who on the base of it as an overall average rating is better than Mzee the Gungbo. I actually class a Gungbo as our best defender. If we highlight them between, we ignore Curtis Nelson because he doesn't play enough. He's a cup, he's a cup player, so he's therefore he will probably go <clears throat> um, this season. Or oh, we're just keeping him around for mentoring purposes. But we've got Franco coming in. Franco's good enough to be part of the first team squad. Um, but yeah, we have a look. Appearances: twenty three, nine, eighteen. <clears throat> um, shots per ninety we ignore because that is more you know when they when the headers off the corners. Um, passes completed Tom Lockyer 24 uh, and Philip Lionheart 25 you've got Mazzi the Gungbo on 20 um, a Gungbo not that he, he can't pass a ball but if you look at his, his traits and his attributes whatnot, he's got 9 passing and 7 vision compared to Tom Lockyer's uh, 12 passing <laughs> and then Philip Lionheart who has got 10 passes in that vision. So that kind of makes sense. Um, key passes per 90, though. A gungbo, 0.16. So he's not completing as many passes, but when he's playing that ball long, his passes are basically better than the two that we've got there. He's made two key passes overall. None of them have got an assist. Interceptions per 90. Tom Lockyer, 0.97. Mazzee the gungbo, 1.19. Both of them have got the trait now where they don't dive into tackles. 
Um, and again, as we, we pointed out in the previous video, it basically decreases the overall frequency in which they will attempt to tackle. So they just drop back, you know, they'll sit back, and then when they can win it back, they will win it back, which is quite good because neither of them are very aggressive. Um, uh, Headers won. He, Mazida Gungbo, is, is well up there. Uh, tackle rate percentage is 92%. Um, I think he's our best defender, in all honesty. Um He's still got room to grow as well. If you can turn these 12s into, let's say, 13s, 14s, I'd be more than happy with 14. Um, he's already physical enough. His mentals will just keep growing the more he plays. But if you can turn these 12s into like 13s, 14s, he's genuinely like the best centre-back we have. And he cost us nothing from Arsenal a season ago. Um, yeah. More than happy with that. So he and Lockyer will be the starting partnership against Erling Haaland. Um, we need the pace at the back, essentially. And although Lionheart is quicker, I've just got a feeling that Haaland will tear him a new one, to be completely honest. He's not aggressive enough to deal with Haaland. Um, yeah, he's not going to play. Uh, again, we need to disrupt them. So Alan Campbell will play as a defensive midfielder on support. He's there to be in their face, win the ball back, pass it off, done. Um, for that reason, we're going to have him on shorter passing and take fewer risks. There we go. Uh, Kula Bali. We have been playing Richards as a Metzala. Um, that's because we, we've not had anyone to carry the ball from midfield. And he's he's filled that role quite well. Um, he actually scored a really good goal, cutting in from that left-hand side too. Um but I don't know whether to play him or whether to play Pelly Ruddock because, again, Pelly Ruddock's a bit more aggressive. He's a bit more in your face. Um, or we could play the absolute curveball of, of playing Jacob Davenport as a ball winning midfielder. He gets forward whenever possible and he looks to pass rather than attempting to score. Um, but you can see he's very aggressive. He's got a decent amount of stamina. He's really determined. Um, he's got decent marking, tackling, and, tackling and passing. Um and he dives into his tackles. I'm quite tempted <laughs> to play Davenport as a as a ball winner, you know. Um ball winning midfielder on support. And we don't need him to stay wider in this instance. Uh, Dan James has to be involved in some way or another. So We'll take Lyndon Dykes out. James Bray will come in. Hamache is going to miss the game entirely. So Arthur Zagra will come in. Uh, Taylor Richards makes the bench. Um, we don't need the goy heat. We'll put Adam Phillips in there. I'm happy with that. Adam Phillips, coincidentally, is actually... Performing quite well. You can see a 6.77. His value's gone right up. Um, as a deep line playmaker, which we don't play all that often now, he's he's performing a lot better than George Honeyman, um, which is surprising. But, yeah. <sighs> I'm not putting the cap on. I know what you're thinking. You're looking at the thumbnail. I'm not putting the cap on. I do not look like Jürgen Klopp. But um, yeah, I'm gonna get into the game. We'll we'll just uh, we'll just skip ahead to get into the game now. So here we are for the Liverpool game. Their expected lineup is Holland, Mane, Curtis Jones, Mo Salah, Locatelli, Henderson, Robertson, Van Dijk, Fabinho, and Trent Alexander-Arnold. Um, we've basically just been told to to put all their players onto their weaker side and press them. <sighs> I'm looking forward to it. I think we've explained what we're doing and why we're doing it. Do you know what I'm tempted to do, actually, is put Dan James in as an attacking winger and in Kete as like a support and inside forward. Just purely for the pace aspect and if we are playing quite wide. Um, we can mix it, but it's going to be a a hard game. They all seem up for it, though. They all agree with the tactic. Got a good, good group of lads down here at uh, 
the den. We are due to move into our new stadium uh, at the end of the current season, I believe. Um, but we'll see. We'll see. I'm not sure. I think it's the end of the current season. Um, we're, we've also uh, improved our youth recruitment. And we're looking at a new affiliate club. Um, we basically need like a championship or league one team that we can send people to. Um, the likes of, of Gary Brown, who's over at Redden. We need we need people like that. Um, but yeah, the expected lineup is exactly what what they've done. They've got some good players. Ferran Torres. Oh. Jacob Davenport's looking aggressive. We like to fucking get stuck in, lad. Yanis Hamat Jamison's a big miss. Um, he's been playing very well. He's quite injury prone, um, but it's something that we're just going to have to look to work around. Might be a case that we um, we set his training into less intensive, like we used to do with Andy Carroll, and see how it goes from there. But we get the game underway. I feel like Danny Dyer on that video. <laughs> I am shitting myself. Kula Bali's got an early chance. As he bombs forward, finds James Bree. Kula Bali's ball it. <sighs> I thought in Kathir had uh, got himself on the end of that then. But yeah, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. But um, I've found th this current save. And in particular, this current season, sort of the most interesting I've had an FM for a while. And we get it forward. Why quickly? Yes, by itch. Dan James, get your cross in. Oh. And you can see that it was Van Dyke who had to come across to tackle him. So the idea behind what we're doing is working because we drew Van Dyke out of position. It's just how well we defend areas like this. And it's very well as we break again. Go on, Eddie. Go on, son. Oh, Kula Bali. Eddie and Ketia. Oh, he's got a shot away. And it's saved by Allison. A very good opening cameo from Luton there. Um, but yeah, as I was saying, it, it's the most interesting because it's made me delve into the tactical side more and it's made me think a little bit more and read the descriptions uh, to sort of see what's happening and, and how the game reads particular things uh, as as i mentioned a few times that that uh, low defensive line much lower being one of the the, the higher pressing ones it is mad really you can sort of mess around with the mid block and the low block and whatnot doing that um but we've started quite well we've restricted them to Three shots. We've got more of the ball as well. We, we started well in the open in 15 minutes. We've got a lot more of the ball. It's just whether we can take advantage of it. I might even have James and Kathy swapping frequently. As Liverpool have a throw in on this far side. Good block. Salah goes back to Jordan Henderson. Locatelli back to Henderson. Yes, a gungbo. Loves an interception, is either gungbo. How quickly he recovers is just insane. See, Manny's getting the better of Zagra on this side from the looks of it. It may even be that Lockie is not providing enough cover for a gungbo, but we'll have to take our chances with that one, I think. For now, and see how it goes. We've caught Holland offside there as well. See, a lot of their attacks are coming down the right hand side for Salah. I'm happy with this, mate. I'm happy. I'll take a nil nil. I'm telling you, that Liverpool team is something else. Get them another encourage just towards the end of the half. Make sure they don't let their heads drop. And Ketty again. He's just not performing like 6.4. I and mean, again, I understand that he's playing against a big team, but he's doing this week in, week out. And you think that the player that he is and the player that he was for us last season to now just sort of be, he's just a bit part player, really. I wouldn't really be that bothered if he didn't play anymore. It's quite a, a sad state of affairs as this half's winding down. I'm thinking of bringing Jatter on for Enketia at, at half time, to be honest. We've got a corner, though. 
Zagre to take. As Lockie gets up, it's headed away, comes back to Arthur Zagre, gets it across a gumbo. <gasps> it's blocked away, and then Ketty is given away. Sadio Mane. That looked like a penalty to me. That really looked like a penalty to me. So we had to bring on Shea Ojo to play as an inverted winger, or we bring on uh, Bakary Jatta to play as an inside forward on the left hand side and keep James as a winger. Um, I'm happy with how that went. Only one book and two, and we've got them extremely pressing. Um, that's quite good. Jacob Davenport's not having the best game. Um, we've only really got Phillips, Honeyman, or Richards. But again, Richards isn't the one who's going to get in their faces and win the ball back. Alan Campbell's playing very well at defensive midfield, and obviously we're channeling them into the middle. So I don't really want to bring him off just yet. Um, we will bring Jatter on as an inside forward. Um, we'll keep Davenport out there for now. Um, if absolute need be, we'll bring Pelly Ruddock on. Actually, let's make that sub now. Let's bring Pelly Ruddock on. Uh, we'll put Kula Bali as the ball winner and Pelly Ruddock as the box to box. Pelly Ruddock will get further forward than, than Kula Bali will. Yeah, we'll go with that. But a very good start. Again, we're, we're developing a tactic based on the level we are and the level of opposition we're playing. So, you know, it, it's not massive, fast, free-flowing football that we're going to score. Sorry, I just... I remember they said something about Salah and closing them down a bit more. And I don't think it's set. Um, Mo Salah. Press him more. And we've had Trent's undies down. <laughs> 6.4. But yeah, we'll take it from there. Speaking of Trent, he's on the ball now. And Arthur Zagra with a lovely challenge. Free transfer, man. Great signing. What I do worry about, though, is just Liverpool's overall quality. I mean, it's, it's the team they've got is just mental. So it's it's a case of taking our chances if we do manage to make them and just keep restricting them as we have been doing. You can see Mazida Gungbo again is having an absolute blinder against Curtis Jones, Sadio Mane, Erlen Haaland and Mohamed Salah. Um, he's, pick him up on your saves if you can, honestly. He's, he's so good. I can't end him enough. We're just going to pop Gamvula to a poacher. Um, that's purely because if we do manage to get the ball forward, we want him on the last line. Good save by Itch. That um, Paolo de Souza, some player on this as well. Liverpool have got him there. He's the guy who's just had the shot. He's a great player on this game. <sighs> Van Dijk beat Loch here in the air there. Yeah, I think we need to just give them another few words of encouragement. I think the next change to make is probably line half for Lockyer because Lockyer is not performing well at all. We've hit 60 minutes. Let's get that sub on and try and shore up that defence. Again, hopefully we can hit them on a counter, but I will be more than happy with a nil-nil. As boring as it probably is for you guys on a, on a Tuesday night watching some bald scouts lad to get in a nil nil draw against Liverpool. As they come forward again with a Robertson. Curtis Jones, Andy Robertson. Pulls header away a gungbo. A Pelly Ruddock. And here's how we can counter Jatter. Play it. Kulabali. Oh, Fabinho's won it back. See, it it makes sense in my head, and I'm glad I got to 
sort of get my point across in, in what the plan was. I think a better player than Jatta would have played um, Dan James in there. I'm just going to get him to swap if I can. No, you don't do it there, do you? You do it from here. And you go to tactics. Click on him. Click on... Oh, no, it's, it's at the bottom there. Swap positions with Dan James. And I'm hoping that just puts Liverpool off a little bit if they keep swapping over. They don't do it all that often. You might just notice down uh, at the bottom here, they'll just swap every now and again. As Bree heads away, here's Dan James. Keeps it away. And that's what we have to look out for. It's Erling Haaland, and it's a quick counter-attack. We give the ball away poorly on the transition, and Liverpool made us pay. It was this pass here, and you could see Gamvula peeled off as well. And it's Linehart. Oh, it was Linehart. He let him go. It's fine, though. I'm happy. We're, we're playing well. Going to push the tempo up a bit more, though. And try and get those balls forward quicker to Gamvula. But again, not a massive loss if we do lose this. We've performed well um, with a defensive mentality. So I'm happy with it. It's Holland. Was that line art he dived in again? Because that's a gungbo, isn't it? See, Mazida Gungbo's our best defender. He really is. Maybe taking Lockyer off was the wrong move, but we took the risk. It was a calculator's risk, and it may not work, but we took the risk anyway. Gamvula's not really doing anything more. Let's just pop him back as a press and forward for the last sort of 15 minutes or so. Campbell, big tackle. Gamvula missed times as header as Firmino finds Holland. Mo Salah, Firmino 2 0. Well, we held firm for a good 65, 70 minutes. But they've, yeah, 68 minutes we held firm for. And we played well. We did play well. That's a shame. We've done really well up until. The last sort of 20 minutes. And again, it, it's that quality. You see, they took Curtis Jones off and they put Firmino on and they've just sort of steamrolled us since that that point. Is to get another corner now? There's Mo Salah over it. Let's say it again by Bayic. His long kick is headed away. Jones to Mane, slips it through, by a chance of it. Again, yeah, Linehart, is, he's very good. I just don't think he's that good to, to be at this level. I think Lockyer and um, Agungbo are definitely the starting pair. And then Dave Franco coming in is, is probably the next backup option. I would... I wouldn't say happily, but I'd entertain an offer for Lionheart in the summer, considering he's worth about 14, 15 million, and we paid, I think, 3 million for him with his release clause. It's James finds Pelly Ruddick. That's not a bad attempt at ball at all from Alan Campbell, because Gamvula was on the move. So Gungbo wins the header again off Holland. Sadio Mane slips it through to Holland again, and it's a big save by Bayic. So I think what they've done is they, they've they've dropped their um their pressing line, and they're basically trying to wait until we counter, and then they're countering us. That's the only thing I can think that they've done. Off the top of my head, let's just give them one last encourage just before the end of the game. They've not performed badly. A few meh. Individual performances. Um, I thought, based on early viewing, Dan James and, and Gamvula were going to have better performances, but they've just sort of 
faded away a little bit. Maybe the occasions got the better of them. As Mo Salah misses a chance to make it three. Um, but yeah, I mean, I'm I'm happy with it. They're a better team at the end of the day. They're top of the league for a reason. They've got some of the best players in the world playing for them, and we created some chances. Um, unlucky. It was unlucky. That there's nothing more to say on it. Um, but that's the idea that I, I I wanted to get across was that we play. Although we are defensive, it's more the tactical shape that's defensive. We are actually quite expansive when we attack. And you see from the few highlights that there were there, particularly the one with Dan James getting in behind the defence and getting his cross in, and the one with Kula Bali, that when we do pick up the ball, we're quick on it. It's pragmatic. It's um, Rafa Benitez calls it the short blanket. Um, if your head's cold, you, you pull the blanket up, but then your feet are cold. So you pull it back down, your head's cold again. It's finding that right balance. And although we are playing a um a defensive mentality, we don't carry ourselves as a defensive team. Um, particularly with that much lower line of engagement, it actually classes on the manager rating as a gig and press system because it's saying by description, your forwards are the ones that instigate the press. Um, but again, I'm quite, I'm quite happy. I'm, it, I'm not happy because we've lost, but I'm happy and I'll, I'll take the result. Um, it wasn't the end of the world. It wasn't the best result. We are still 10th in the league on the 15th of February. We've got some more favourable opposition coming up. We've got Villa, who are sort of in and around us. Uh, Leicester below us. Arsenal, Everton. Yeah, it's not the end of the world. We've got to do well. I think we need to pick up a minimum of 12 points in these next couple of games to be safe. Um, but we have got the likes of Southampton, Newcastle, Burnley, Norwich, Everton and Leicester who are all below us. So we've definitely got a chance there. And as you've seen against the top of the league team, we can make chances. So hopefully we pick it back up. Um, Sylvie's not scored in three games now. Um, we need him to be firing soon. But Anyway, lads, thank you very much for watching if you stayed the entire time. I really do appreciate it. Um, these longer videos, I feel like I can get more across in. Um, they might be a bit of a slog, especially when you see us drawing nil-nil for 70 minutes against Liverpool. Um, but I feel like this is the type of video I like to put across. I'm not all about the editing and and chopping and changing and trying to make gimmicks out of it. Like It is what it is. It's, just, it's me playing the game. Um, but anyway, that is it for me now. Um, I will more than likely just upload Tuesdays and Sundays now. Um, so you should see another video coming out in the, the coming days. And yeah, hopefully you all have a lovely rest of the week. Take care.